All right. <laughs> Can you guys see me? This is my first ever by myself Facebook Live. <laughs> We're doing Kids Church today, so I hope some people will join us and let me know if this is working, if you guys can see me. And I'm just gonna try and kind of rotate the camera. All right. So if you are jumping in and watching, please hop on and say hello. And um, let me know you're here. Let me know if you can hear me. Give me some thumbs up if you can see. Just kind of popping on over on my laptop to see if people can see me and if it's working. So, all right, here we go, here we go. <laughs> Hello and good morning, everyone. I am also filming this on um, a different camera so I can hopefully upload it to YouTube as well. And so today it's our first ever Kids Church Live. I'm really excited about that. For those of you guys who don't know, I am Hillary, Hillary Fernandez now, and I work at Community of Hope Church. And I am going to be jumping in and doing some more lives um, here on the Community of Hope Hope Facebook page and um, sharing these on YouTube as well to just encourage you guys and give you something really fun to do during this super crazy time in our world. So as some more people hop on, I'm going to give a few really quick announcements. Um, so the first thing is join us this Sunday, March 22nd for a Facebook Live message. Um, it will be happening at 9 a.m. and we did one last week that went really well. You guys can watch that if you would like. It's saved here on Facebook and on YouTube. And um, as of right now, Gary Blumenthal is going to be sharing with us his mission trip from when he went to Papua New Guinea, his latest trip. And so um, we're really excited to hear from Gary and see a lot of really awesome pictures from his mission trip. So we have Tully here. Thank you, Tully, for watching. We're so excited you're here. So as you guys are jumping in, please write some comments, say hello, um, so I can say hi. So my next um, announcement is if you have a middle or high school youth, we are going to be doing an Instagram Live because more youth tend to be over on Instagram. And that is going to be at 2 p.m. The Instagram account is at coh.youth. So you can pop on to watch on Instagram. And we have Devin is here as well. Hi, Devin. It's so good to have you guys here. And I'm hoping moving forward to be doing Kids Church Live every Thursday morning. We'll just kind of see how things go. And um, But I think this is a really awesome way for me to get to interact with you guys and share God's word and share some encouragement and have fun. And we have Luciana and Nathan here. Hello. Yay. That makes me so happy. And uh, my last announcement is make sure that you guys are signed up for the Kids Church Newsletters. I sent one out yesterday and I, was, I read a book and so that's something really fun also to look forward to. And um, yeah, I'm going to try doing this my right side up now. <laughs> like I said, this is my very first time doing a Facebook Live by myself. We had a whole team working together last Sunday, which was nice, but I am working from home, so it's a little bit different. Can you guys see me better now? Is that better? Hopefully. Um, and Gus and B are here. Hello, hello. And definitely keep commenting down below. And yes, you guys can see me better now. So yay, that's good. <laughs> so.
So to get started, I thought it would be really fun to share. I want you guys to share in the comments. So tell your parents and they'll text it out. Share about a time where you went to the beach. So I wanna hear about a time that you guys went to the beach. So whether you were at the Oregon coast or maybe you guys went on a special vacation to Hawaii or something like that. Um, but I wanna know a story from when you guys went to the beach. So take a few minutes to comment out a little story, uh, a little beach story. And we're gonna be talking more about the beach um, later today and the ocean and some really crazy things that happened there. Um, but I'm gonna share, let's see, there's lots of different beach stories. I'm gonna share the most recent time I went to the beach was with my husband. He's over at the kitchen table right now. And um, so we went to Lincoln City for a little one night honeymoon and it was so much fun. It was his first time seeing the Oregon coast and the Pacific Ocean. And he said it was beautiful, but in a different way from the Dominican Republic because where he's from, the beaches are warm. They have like the bath, the ocean is like bath water and white sand and stuff like that. And so Oregon beaches are a little bit different. <laughs> But it was really, it was still really fun. We walked to, we were at Lincoln City and we walked to the beach and um, the tide pools were out and so we got to go and we found some agates and some shells and so that was kind of the latest time we went to the beach. So I want to hear from you guys. When is a time you went to the beach? What's a story you have from the ocean and being near the ocean? So we have Tully saying seaside. Seaside beach is so much fun. You guys went there on vacation, which is awesome. Uh, I haven't been to seaside in a really long time. So that's really neat that you guys went there. So I'd love to hear more stories from the beach. And then the next thing, I want you guys to either comment below or... Um, talk at your house about share a time when you had a picnic. So that is another thing that we are going to be talking a little bit about is going on a picnic and a time when Jesus and a lot, a lot, a lot of his friends went on a picnic. And I wanted to share a picnic story. Um, but before I do that, I want to just read some of your guys's beach stories. So Michelle says, um, you guys went to Rockaway for Thanksgiving. Oh my goodness, what a fun place to spend Thanksgiving um, with a lot of friends and family. And you walked along the beach and picked up sticks and ate turkey because it was Thanksgiving. And then Devin was two, you guys went to Hawaii. Oh my goodness, that is so much fun. My parents just got back from Hawaii and that is a really fun place to go to the beach. And Gus and Bia love building sand castles and playing in the water, that's so fun. Uh, building sand castles is awesome. And then Tully said they went to Seaside and found over 40 crabs. Oh my goodness, that is so many crabs. That is super fun. So now comment below and share some stories about picnics. Have you guys been and done a picnic before? Uh, I'd love to hear your picnic stories. So the one I'm gonna share was from my second year in the Dominican Republic. I lived on the fourth floor Floor. So I lived really high up and roofs in the Dominican Republic are flat and you do things on them. So we would hang out on the roof, we'd watch the sunset and the sunrise on the roof, my friends and I. That's where we hung our laundry to dry. So when we had clean clothes, we would go up on the roof and hang them up. And so the sun would dry them. So we spent a lot of time hanging out on the roof. They're not like roofs here in Oregon. And so one of my favorite things we would do sometimes is we would cook dinner and we would bring it to the roof and we would spread out a blanket and watch the sunset and eat dinner up on the top of the roof. And so me and my friends would do that and it was so much fun. And last night even, Juan and I had a little picnic on the floor of our apartment. And so I would challenge you guys to do that too. Think about how you can have a picnic inside in your home right now and bring a special blanket 
it and some special treats and kind of do do that so let's hear your picnic stories Devin has picnics you guys have them in your backyard and your dog tries to eat all the food that is the hard thing about a picnic right is that the food is low on the ground and so sometimes the dogs or squirrels or birds try and get the food and Kelly's talking about how you guys had a picnic in your front yard. That's really fun. We live in an apartment, so unfortunately, we don't really have a yard <laughs> to use. <laughs> and Tully says um, that he doesn't usually go on picnics. That's okay, too. So those are just some questions to kind of get you guys' minds going as we jump in to some stories today. And I wanted to mention at the end of this live, we're gonna try and do an activity together. I have to say, we, um, I've never, I've only done this once yesterday, but we're gonna try and do some origami. So as I'm sharing the Bible stories, I want you guys to make sure you have a piece of white paper. So make sure you grab a piece of white paper if you haven't already. So we are going to be reading some stories from the Bible today, and um, I love reading the Bible. It is God's Word. It is powerful, and it encourages us and teaches us new things. And so I'm really excited to share with you guys today three little mini stories from the Bible. And before we get started on reading God's Word, we're going to pause and pray. So if you guys at your homes would fold your hands and bow your heads, and we're going to pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for the way um, technology connects us. And even though we're all at our homes, Lord, we can still come together and be encouraged and be in community and be encouraged by you, God. I pray, Lord, that you would speak to each and every one of our hearts. I pray that you would fill us with your peace, God. And I pray most of all that we could um, just rest in you today, that you would um, just comfort us and draw us closer and closer to you. And we pray for all the people who are watching this video, God, that you would use these stories to encourage them today. In Jesus' name, all God's children said, Amen. All right, so we are going through the story this year at church. And so we are got all the way through the Old Testament. If you guys would comment down below, what is something that you've learned this year in Sunday school? So we went through the Old Testament and we talked about Adam and Eve and creation. And then we talked about how they did something that they shouldn't have and they kind of messed things up a little bit for us. And um, so then we talked about the Israelites and um, we talked about just all the ups and downs and how they obeyed and disobeyed and obeyed and disobeyed. And so I want to hear from you guys. Comment below what's one thing that you've learned so far in Kids Church this year. I would love to hear that. And um, let's see. Oh, Graham is here. Hi, Graham. It's good to have you. So um, as I'm reading, I want you guys to comment what is one thing that you've learned so far this year in Kids Church. And so now we got through the whole Old Testament and now we're into the New Testament. We had like a little Christmas celebration a few weeks ago at church when we talked about the birth of a Savior. And so now we are on chapter 24, which is No Ordinary Man. No Ordinary Man. And so I'm going to read this today. So John 10 30 says, I and the father are one. There's not really any kind of pictures yet. So it says here, let's see. Oh, Devin learned that he can ask God for help. Yes, that is an awesome thing to learn and to remember um, from what we've been reading in the Bible. So chapter 24, no ordinary man says, from the very beginning, the Bible speaks of a king. It was a king who created the world with just a word. It was a king who commanded the water to do remarkable things, to flood the earth, to turn to blood, to divide into two walls so his people could escape and return them again to their land. 
It was a king who was born in Bethlehem. For centuries, the Jewish people were expecting a great king to come and save them. They were thinking the king would be powerful and strong like other world rulers. They were expecting a king with an army to free them from the Romans. But their king, Jesus, was different. He told them, the time has come, the kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe in the good news. The people were surprised. The high priests were angry. This wasn't the type of king anyone expected. So we are going to read, like I said, three little mini stories today. And the first one is called Hush Big Wind. And so you'll see that this is kind of why I asked you guys for stories about the ocean. Because we're going to read a story about the ocean. And have you guys ever seen the ocean, especially at the Oregon coast, when it is um, stormy and when there's big waves? Have you guys ever seen the ocean when it's like that? because it can be kind of scary. Um, so this is a story of when the disciples were in the same spot, when the storms were raging. So this is Hush Big Wind. The people had been following Jesus for days, eager to hear his teaching and hopeful for healings. Jesus hardly had a moment to catch his breath. The crowds were so huge that sometimes Jesus preached to the people on the shore from a boat in the water. Oh my goodness. This time when Jesus climbed into the boat, he simply wanted to rest. He told his disciples, let's take the boat to the other side of the sea. As soon as they left the shore, Jesus found a quiet spot in the boat and stretched out for a nap. He slept and slept while the disciples steered the boat and whispered to each other so they wouldn't disturb him. Soon the skies turned dark and the storm clouds rolled in. The water became choppy. White caps slapped the sides of the boat. The gently rocking sea became wildly frightening. Water began to slosh into the boat. The wind howled, the thunder boomed, and the lightning lit up the sky. We're going down, cried the disciples. Help, they shouted, holding on to the sides of the boat. But Jesus, you guys, guess what Jesus was doing? He was fast asleep. The wind, thunder, and lightning did not disturb him. Teacher, yelled the disciples, trying to wake him up. Don't you care if we drown? So there's the picture. Wow. So, um, let's see if I can do it this way. Jesus opened his eyes. Then he calmly stood up and spoke to the wind and waves. Quiet down, be still. And guess what, you guys? The wind and waves obeyed. Immediately, calm returned to the sea. The boat settled back into its gentle rocking rhythm. Jesus turned to the disciples. Why are you so afraid? Don't you believe in me? The disciples, still amazed by what had happened, couldn't even answer. All they could do was wonder, who is this man? Even the wind and waves obey him. Wow, what a crazy story. So what's something that you guys learned from that story? It's called Hush Big Wind. Type something down below. What did you guys learn from that story, that Bible story? So in here it has some different things that, maybe I can go like this. <laughs> it has some different things that we can learn. It says, you are his disciples, but you do not understand. My power is with him always. This is God's message to us. Um, God's words melt hardens hearts. His gentle touch heals. His simple command to control, he, his simple commands control the storm and the seas. And someday we will know that he is, that Jesus is God's son. So those are some messages that we learned. Um, but I also want to hear from you guys. What are some messages that you learned? Let me see if I can kind of tip it down a little bit more. All right, so that was story number one. Story number two is called The Never-Ending Picnic. So that's why I was asking you guys about picnics because story number two is about a never-ending picnic. Is that kind of perplexing and kind of weird and crazy? How can a picnic never end? 
And Luciana says, don't worry because Jesus can take care of you. That is such an important thing for us to remember, Luciana. That is an awesome, awesome thing. So here we have the never-ending picnic. It says, the little boy tugged on Andrew's robe. Sir? Andrew shooed the boy away. Again, the boy tried. Sir, sir, I can help. You, help. Thanks, but our problem is far too big for one little boy, Andrew said, as he tried to keep from laughing at the child's offer. I can share my lunch, the little boy insisted. Andrew looked at the thousands of people who had gathered on the hillside to hear Jesus teach. It was getting late, close to supper time. The crowd would be getting hungry soon. The disciple looked again at the young boy. Come with me, he instructed. Together they walked over to Jesus. This boy would like to share his meal with the people, but it's only five loaves and only two fish. Not nearly enough for this hungry crowd. Jesus smiled. Tell everyone to sit down on the grass, he said. So there's Jesus and the little boy and look at all those people. As everyone settled down, Jesus held up the bread and fish and said a prayer of thanks. He gave the food to the disciples, telling them to share with all the people. They did as he instructed. The disciples went through the crowd of thousands, giving food to everyone. The people on the hillside had plenty to eat. There was so much food that 12 baskets full of bread and fish were left over. The people had come to hear a lesson from Jesus, but instead of hearing a lesson, they saw a miracle. But in, um, two little fish and five loaves were miraculously multiplied by Jesus. Oh, wow. That is such a cool story, you guys. What is something that you learned from the story of the never-ending picnic? I would love to hear. Write a comment below or have your parents write a comment below. What can we learn about the story of the never-ending picnic? So some things that um, is written here in the book that we can learn. Now you see that the smallest child can bring the largest gift. Through God's power, a few loaves and fish can feed a whole crowd. And nothing is too small for God to use in caring for his people. So what awesome truths. I'd love to hear what did you learn from that story. One of the things I think about is sometimes maybe you guys have heard that different resources and stores that there are, isn't enough for everyone or that no one can find something. That God can multiply anything. So let's pray for him to multiply things. And I also love how Jesus said a prayer of thanksgiving. Because I think that's something that um, we can do too, right? We can thank God for all that he has blessed us with. So here's the picture. As you guys are typing, what did you learn from this story? of the never-ending picnic. Look at Jesus there, holding everything, handing everything out. So let's see, Tully says, Jesus calms everything. It's just a simple life lesson. Ask and you shall receive. I can't see the rest of the comment, but yes, ask and you shall receive. Gus and Bia say that God will provide. Yes, what an awesome story of God's provision. Awesome. So keep typing as I read the last story. It's called Jesus Walks on the Water. Let's see. Luciana says, God can do amazing things and provide for us. Yes, he can. So this is the story of Jesus Walks on Water. So we have another story, you guys, about the ocean. So it's kind of a cool theme from today is thinking about the ocean and all these cool things that God has done. So Jesus Walks on the Water. Jesus wanted to spend some time alone. While he climbed a hill to find a quiet place to pray, his disciples set sail on the Sea of Galilee to cross over to a town called Capernaum. During the night, the wind stirred up and Jesus' disciples rowed hard to keep the boat on course. Jesus came down from his praying place and watched the disciples struggling against the wind. Because he was the Son of God, Jesus could do things that ordinary people 
could not do. Jesus decided to join his disciples, so he walked out to their boat on the water. He walked across the dark water as if it were solid ground. When the disciples saw the shadowy figure moving toward them, they were startled and scared. So here's the picture. The stormy sea, and then we have Jesus walking on the water. How crazy would that have been to see, right? To see you're in the storm and you see this kind of shadowy figure coming towards you walking on water. I think I might be a little bit scared. <laughs> so, and we have here. Jesus tried to calm them. Don't be afraid, he said. It's me. One of the disciples, Peter, replied, If it's really you, tell me to come to you on the water. And Jesus said, Come. So Peter did. He climbed out of the boat and began walking to Jesus. At first, Peter felt brave, knowing that Jesus was near. But when he glanced at the rough waters, his courage disappeared, and he began to sink into the sea. Peter called to Jesus for help. Lord, save me. Jesus reached down and pulled Peter up out of the water. Once Jesus and Peter were back inside of the boat, the disciples filled the little craft with praise and worship. The followers now understood who Jesus was, and they said, Truly you are the Son of God. And look at that powerful picture of Jesus pulling Peter out of the water. And here's all the disciples watching. So I want to know, what did you guys learn from that story? It was called Jesus Walks on Water. Um, so a few different things that we can learn. Um, we can learn that Jesus is God's son. That's super powerful that he was walking on water. And when we cry out to him and ask him for help, he will be there for us. What awesome, awesome truths. So comment down below, have your parents write something saying, what did you learn from the story of Jesus walking on the water? I'd love, love, love to hear. So remember the first story that we read was called Hush Big Wind. And the second story we read was called The Never Ending Picnic. And the third story we did was called Jesus Walks on Water. So cool. Um, Gus and Bia said to have faith even when we're scared. That is such an important lesson for us to learn. I love that. All right. Are you guys ready to attempt to make a paper boat? I'm really excited about this. I hope it worked. It worked yesterday. Let me see if I can lower my window. Maybe it'll be a little bit easier for you guys to see me. So this is what we're going to attempt to make. So do you guys have your white piece of paper? Make sure you grab your white piece of paper. All right. We're going to see how this works. <laughs> so make sure you have a piece of white paper and I think we're going to do, we're going to need a pair of scissors as well because we're going to cut the paper into a square. So Tully says, I'm typing myself. My parents aren't typing for me. That's awesome, Tully. Some of the kids watching today don't know how to type yet or write <laughs> or spell. So make sure you guys go grab a piece of white paper. I'll give you a few moments and a pair of scissors because what we're gonna do is cut the paper into a square. So again, we're going to make a little origami boat. I thought this would be fun to kind of represent what we were learning about and with whether it was, you know, the boat is rocky and crazy and there's a storm and Jesus is sleeping in it, or whether we're the disciples and we're in the boat and um, Jesus is walking towards us during the storm. So I thought uh, making a little origami boat would be something really fun to do today. So let's see. 
Give me a thumbs up or comment down below when you guys have your piece of white paper and a pair of scissors. So give me a comment. Let me know if you guys have those supplies. And then we'll get started. So I'm excited. Have any of you guys ever done origami before? I, when I was probably your guys' age, I had like a little book that told me different things about how to make origami shapes, but I've kind of forgotten all of them. <laughs> so I found this idea online and I will put in the next um, kids newsletter, I'll put instructions, the video where I found, um, or maybe, I don't know if I can insert a video as a comment as myself. Let's see if this works. Let's see. So I sent, I emailed you guys, or put a comment. That's the YouTube video um, that, we're, that I'm gonna use. So here we have the piece of white paper. And so what you guys are gonna do, we're going to first make it into a square. So that is important. So what you do is you fold it like this. So I took the paper and I folded it. So I lined up kind of over here, lined it up here. And so you're gonna fold it in half like that. Does that make sense? And so there's like a little bit right here. So you're gonna fold it so it looks like this. So you have it folded over. Sorry, the lighting isn't very good. I think I'm gonna need to figure out how to, I have a big screen that I think I might put up to cover the windows here next time I do this. <laughs> so this is where you guys should be in the process. Did everyone do that? Give me a thumbs up or a comment below that you guys are ready for the next step. So you folded it like this. And we're making the piece of paper into a square. So then you're going to take your scissors. And if you are little, please have your parents use the scissors. <laughs> um, and what you're going to do is you're going to cut off this extra part. So if you see, there's a line right here. You're going to cut all of that off. So now I just cut that off. It used to be here and I cut a straight line. And so now I'm gonna open it and I have a square. So a lot of origami starts using a square piece of paper. So like sometimes you can go to the store, not today, not now. <laughs> but if you buy like a pack of origami paper, it comes like this in a square. I don't have origami paper hanging out at my house, and I bet you guys probably don't either. <laughs> All right, so now we have the square. So, let's see, are we ready for the next step? So the next step is you're going to fold it in half. You're gonna fold it in half like a hamburger. Fold it in half, so to see just like that fold it in half pretty easy next step got it so we're gonna fold it in half I'm referencing the other video because I didn't have time to memorize how to make it so then next we are going to fold the bottom So you're going to have the part that is open, like the mouth of the paper, up on the top. Oh, Layla has origami paper. Layla, use some of yours. <laughs> yours will probably turn out a little prettier than ours. So open the mouth, so have the mouth of the paper facing upward and the folded part on the bottom. The folded part on the bottom and you are going to fold it again. So you're gonna fold the bottom, the part with the fold, up. 
All right. So have you guys done that? So then this is what it should look like. So you now have it folded again. So then you're gonna open it. So now you can see you have a fold in the middle and we are gonna have the mouth again open on the top. So you have a fold in the middle, the fold is up here and the mouth is at the very top. And so now you're gonna fold over the corner like that. You get that? You're gonna fold over one corner like that. So does everyone see that? Have that part done? Gonna fold over the little corner and then guess what? You're gonna fold over the other side. Fold over the other side. So you're kind of making two little triangles. Isn't that cool? All right. So pretty simple. You guys have that part done? Give me a thumbs up. Help me to know if you got that part done. So now we're going to turn the paper around and do the same thing and fold this part down. And then we're gonna fold the other corner down like that. All right. So now your paper should look like this. You should have four little triangles on the top. Does that look good? You guys to that part of the process. All right, next. What we're gonna do, let's see. Oh, sorry guys. I lost, lost my place. Stay with me, you're doing good. This gives you extra time if you got lost. <laughs> so now what we're going to do is fold the bottom. So remember the fold is on the bottom and you're gonna fold it up like this. Does that make sense? So you're gonna fold the bottom up so you have another little triangle. Remember the fold is on the bottom. So fold that corner up. You guys see that? And then on the other side, you're gonna do the same thing and fold, it's kind of hard to do in the air. I'm gonna fold that one that way. So, does everyone have this? So you still have the open mouth on the top, the fold at the bottom, and you have now all these little triangles. Is everyone there? Oh, Dana's here. Everyone take a moment to say hi to Dana. She is recovering from a really big back surgery. So I hope everyone has been praying for her. So everyone say hi, Dana. Leave a little comment below for her or send up some hearts in the air. Say hi to Dana. All right, so continuing with the boat. All right, now we're going to fold. So this is where your paper should be. You're gonna fold, is everyone watching? Fold that down. So this is what we had. And you're gonna fold that part down. All right. You guys see that? 
So now it's folded down, that part you just did. You're going to see it. So it was like this. And then you're folding that down. All right. And then you're going to turn it around and do the other side. And you're going to fold the other side down. And then you guys, look, we made a boat. How awesome is that? So now you have your own little boat. Did you guys make it? Were you able to do it? Give a heart or a thumbs up or comment below if you guys were able to make the little boat. So now you guys can put things in it. I have my little pen here that I could put. I could put a little bottle of hand sanitizer in there. Or, I don't know, I cleared off my desk so there's not a lot for me to put in here. <laughs> but now you have this cute little boat. So leave a comment, did you guys make it? Did you guys make it? And then if you happen to have like a marker or a crayon or a colored pencil, why don't we write a Bible verse on it? So if you guys want to go run and grab a pen or a marker, I have my markers somewhere so I'm going to look for them and we're going to write a Bible verse on it. All right, so go run and grab a colored pencil or a normal pencil or a pen or something. I'm going to look for a blue one to kind of represent the water. Here's my blue marker. All right, do you guys have a marker or a pen or something to write with? So I'll give you guys just a few moments to go grab that. You guys finding it? Found a writing utensil to use. All right, and let's see. Let's, we're gonna write out, I'm gonna copy the verse into the Facebook comment. So that way you guys can copy it on that way. It's going to be Mark 4, verse 40. Mark 4, verse 40. So it says, Jesus said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? So if you guys can write it on your boat, do that. If you don't know how to write yet, have your parents write it for you. And we're going to write out that verse. If you guys could say it out, out loud too. While, while we write it. Jesus said to his disciples. Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? It can be so easy, you guys, to be afraid or scared. But guys, God is with us. He is with us in every boat and in every storm. So here's me, what I wrote. I'm not sure if it's backwards for you guys or not. <laughs> but there's my little boat and what I wrote. So again, we wrote out Mark 4, verse 40. It says, Jesus said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? 
So that is our first ever Facebook Live Kids Church. I hope you guys had fun. I hope you learned something new. Um, leave a comment if you guys had a good time. Um, I would love it if you posted a picture of your boat or texted or emailed me a picture of your boat. I would love to put those in our church newsletter and share them here on Facebook and Instagram as just a neat way to encourage one another um, and so definitely send me your pictures of you with your bow or just of your bow I would love to see those and um, so yeah leave me a comment below if you guys had fun and if you are looking forward to our next kids church Facebook live so I wanted to close us in prayer. So if everyone would pause writing the verses, if you guys haven't finished that, and close your hands and bow your heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much, Lord, that we were able to hang out today via Facebook Live, that we were able to read your word and pray together and have a really fun activity time together, God. And um, so we just thank you for this time. I pray that you would keep us all safe and healthy. I pray, Lord, that you would help us to not be afraid and remember that you are in control and we can trust you and have faith in you. And so we don't need to be afraid. And we love you so much, God. We thank you for Community of Hope and for our church family and how we can be together, even if it's through technology, Lord, during this challenging season. And um, so we pray in all these things in your son, Jesus' name, and all God's children said, Amen. So thank you guys for joining. I had a blast, and I will see you guys soon. Bye.